my goodness. I was kind of looking forward to standing in the middle of the crowd. I feel so lonely out here. Um, it's very interesting that um, when I got invited for this um, program, Pastor Ali told me that I was going to be speaking on going with your God. But I'm not, I don't go for my God. I literally live from my God. As in, that's, that's been my experience since I've, I've been a Christian, you know. Um, I was going to read a scripture. I know that this is a mixed crowd. But it's okay. Daddy, can I help you? I need to see the scripture. I'm so sorry. Thank you. So it's um, see John. Okay, I don't know. Few people have their Bibles here, but I'm going to be reading out of John 7:38. It says, "He that believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." Now everybody knows what, knows what a, a river is like. It's like um, it's water with energy, with movement. It's alive. So from the inside of us, as long as you believe. There's a river flowing. So say to your neighbor, there's a river flowing. So it means that on the inside of me, even right now, it's not static. I might look very calm, but things are exploding on my inside. Ideas, the spirit of God is talking to my spirit, always coming in. There's something flowing out of me. And then the reason why this river flows is not just for you to feel good and have good pimples, or for you to be creative, or for you to have new ideas. I believe that this river that flows on the inside of us is the portal from heaven to earth. So, in the, in the, um, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that the river that flows on the inside of us is how we bring heaven on earth. And I, for instance, believe that I bring heaven on earth via my creativity. So, I'm a photographer and a musician, um, I live 98% of my life as a photographer, but every you know couple of years, I'll sit down and pay attention to the sounds that are coming out of my river because my river is always producing music. You know, I may not call myself a musician, but that is the language of my river. My river produces sounds. Do you understand? So when I wake up in the morning, I listen to the river flowing on the inside of me and there's a lot of sound coming out of there. So what I do is that every once in a while, I take out time and I still work the sound. And in the process of still working the sound, I may come up with songs, I may come up with an album, I may come up with a musical video idea, but the truth is that this river, the, the function of the river is to bring heaven to earth. So everybody say heaven to earth. So we all have the ability and the responsibility to turn her, the hell that we see on earth to a heavenly place. Everybody knows how difficult life is. I always say one of the most difficult things ever is being human. It is very difficult to be human. But we have a river flowing on, on the inside of us. And that river, the ebbs and the flow don't come from earth. They come from heaven. And that is how we bring heaven to earth. The main thing I'm going to share with you, I'm going to be very simple. Um, I live a very, very, very creative life and I live only from one place. I live from the spirit. So when I say um, you call living from your gut, your gut is, um, has many different, many different words that people use to describe their gut. Um, they say something told me. They say uh, my spirit said. Some people call God, God, God told me. Do you understand? But from my faith, I know that um, the scripture says that the spirit of God communicates with my spirit. So my gut is that space that I have within me where God is able to talk with my spirit. How many people are in agreement with what I'm talking about? How many people have experienced what I'm talking about? So today I'm just going to share my own personal responsibility about how to go with your gut. So how do you go with your gut? I'm just going to give you some pointers on how I've lived my life and how I go with the gut and how I live for my, my river. So number one, have gut rituals. I have gut rituals. Um, every photo shoot that I have, every time I make an image, the images have to come from my gut. They have to come from my river. So I have gut rituals. 
For instance, my gut rituals is I pray in the spirit a lot. Do you understand? Whenever I'm about to create anything, or if I'm confused and I don't know what I'm doing, I have gut rituals. I pray in the spirit and I tend to pace my studio. I don't, my river doesn't flow when I'm static. So I'm one of those people when I'm thinking up an idea, I'm moving around a lot. I'm walking around. That's probably why I'm walking and pacing the stage. You have to have gut rituals. For instance, one of my, my gut rituals is I get up in the morning at 5 a.m. and I spend time alone with God. The reason why I spend time alone with God is because that is where the river flows. Do you understand? I believe that's where my river touches his river. And then I come up with all these amazing things. People always think, oh my God, T.Y. Beno is so creative. T.Y. Beno is so intelligent. I can tell you for a fact, I was always an average student. I wasn't one of those that was like, oh, always first in class. In fact, I was never first in class until I started to learn to live for my river. When I started to have this ritual of 5 a.m. in the morning, I went from being an average student in class to being number one in my entire school. So when you read from, when you live from your river, then you start to become more like the person who is the source of the river. So I have a gut ritual. I wake up at 5 in the morning. If I'm not coming up with new ideas, it's because I'm breaking my rituals. It means I'm not praying in the spirit. It means I'm not waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Now, everybody, not everybody here might be from the same standpoint of faith as I, as I am. But I pray in the Spirit because the Bible says that he that prays in the Spirit edifies himself. When I, talk, when I talk about edifying myself, I mean building an edifice. Do you understand that my spiritual experiences can dwell in? So in other words, every time I pray in the Spirit, I build up a house that my spirit can dwell in. That my ideas can thrive in. Do you understand? It's almost as if I'm building mansions in my spirit. I'm creating charts for my rivers to flow in. So when I get up in the morning and I'm like, hey, bara 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 bara, it's not because I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking nonsense. It's because I'm building an edifice for my spiritual experiences to grow. Um, educate your gut. Educate your gut. Educate your river. I always say this, I'm an eternal student, not only of creativity, but of life, but I'm a student of creativity, I'm a photographer, but when I read materials, I'm not constantly reading materials on photography, I'm reading materials on the river, I'm reading materials on creativity, I am constantly educating my gut. In other words, when I have finance available to me, the most precious thing that I can spend money on is educating my inner man. So, when I have money, I don't own diamonds. I have this necklace that I, it's probably like one of my only three or four that I wear. And it's from Zara. It was called, probably cost me like about $10. And that's it. So that I can say that I have a necklace. But I will spend my last bottom dollar to get on a plane and sit in a room with someone that will pour information on me. Do you understand? We must pay value on educating our gut. We must talk to our gut. I speak to myself all the time. I talk to my gut. I remember that when I started my business, I used to say to myself, T.Y. Bello is the most desired photographer amongst high net worth individuals. I did not have one high net worth individual, not one high net worth individual. All my clients are people that wanted photographs for free, but I spoke to my gut. And when I spoke to my God and I told what my God, when I told my God what to do, I said, you will be the most desired photographer amongst high net worth individuals. And then what happened is that my river started to flow and it started giving me strategies and ideas on how I would become that person. So tell your neighbor, talk to your God. Okay, is this helping anybody? Okay. Trust your God. Sometimes, when your heart tells you something, it just doesn't make any sense. When I decided I was going to be a photographer, it didn't make any sense in the year 2000. When I spotted those words out of my mouth and I said, I want to be a photographer, it was a statement that came out of my gut. It didn't come out of my head. Because I knew nothing about photography. I just said it. And when I said it, it felt right. Sometimes when an idea comes to you and you speak, and that thing feels right. Do not ignore it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to your head. I remember when I said, I want to be a photographer. Many people come and say, ah, hey, yeah, why? Kilo day. 
Because in their heads, a photographer is not a successful person. But when I went with my river, I redefined that definition. So where a lot of my clients, who initially were like, are you sure this is what you want to do, are sending their children to return with me. So, trust your God. Everybody say, trust your God. And in the, in the midst of talk, I, I think I've already described this. Differentiate your gut from your brain. Your gut is not your brain. That's why I stick with my gut ritual. I wake up and I spend time with the spirit at 5 a.m. Because my brain is not quite awake yet. So I don't censor what comes out of my river. No matter how ridiculous the thought is, I will write it down. And that will take me to the next point. Journal your gut. Does anybody have a journal? If you have a journal, put up your hand. How many people journal? Fantastic. I always tell people, if you're going to buy me a gift, don't give me, um, don't give me jewelry or perfume. Okay, I like perfume. But buy me a leather journal. I collect these things. Do you understand? Because this is where my river has its voice. I journal. When I journal, I archive my gut. In other words, the things that have come from my river in 2005 are written down. Do you understand? I archive and I journal. Every single good idea I have, every single seemingly bad idea that comes to me, I write down. I don't take my gut for granted. So one good way to journal your gut is to have a gut ritual where before you go to bed at night, you have your journal right beside you with a pen. So whenever something comes to you, you write it down because it's so fleeting. The things that come from the gut, from the river, they're so fragile. They come to you and they are gone. And then you must be a good steward. The good thing about a steward, remember in the Bible where um, the guy that was given the talent went and buried it? You know, why was the master so upset? It's the same thing with God. When he gives you ideas and you don't even respect the ideas enough to write it down, you're not going to get very many. But he's going to give me a lot because the things he told me in 2005 are still in my journal. The things he told me in 1997 are still in my journal. He says, um, never disobey your God. Trust it. Now, I say this with caution because I let of people who say, who make their God their God. So when their God says, they say God says. Remember, your God is just an edifice. It's the place in your spirit, man, where your own spirit is able to connect with the spirit of God. Your God is not God. How many people understand that? So a lot of times people would hear things from their river and they'll say, God said. Yes, your God and God, your, your journey as a Christian or a spiritual person is to basically connect your God so that every time your God is saying something, it's the same thing that God is saying. But that takes a lifetime of training. So you must realize that your God is different from God. But your journey, your journey as a creative person is to make sure that what, what's going on in your gut and what's going on in heaven is the same. You're trying to create a parallel. And the more you get closer to this parallel, the more what's going on in heaven and what's going on the inside of you is the same, then the more you have to trust it. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I hear, don't go out today. And I hear it from that place that I know that I can trust. It's not everything you hear inside of you you can trust. But there's a place that you know you can trust. When, you're, when you have an instruction or you have an idea come up from that place, you must trust it. So tell your neighbor, trust your gut. Okay. Create an atmosphere for your gut. I am a very ritualistic creature. When I need to create, the environment has to be a certain way. The music has to be a certain way. There cannot be fighting people around me. People can't have an argument around me and I'm able to create. So I have to have a very harmonious environment. If two of my staff are fighting, I will pick up on it because my gut is very sensitive. So in general, 
I have created even physically a space where my river can flow easy. Everybody say flow easy. So if you know that you're a creative person, then you have to control your environment, at least your immediate environment. If you work somewhere else, if you can't control where you work, at least con control your room. For me, my gut doesn't work well when the room is disorganized. Everything is nice and everything is organized then I'm able to channel and connect with God. How many people understand what I'm talking about? Next most important point is give your, give your God a break. Everybody say, give it a break. Give it a break. Now, um, the whole concept of phenomenal, Sabbath, is very important. I know a lot of creative people that never stop. We're constantly pulling from our guts and pulling from our guts and pulling from our gut. And it's this step, next idea. After that, there's no break. There's this next program. There's this. How many people are like that? So everybody say to yourself, give your gut, give your gut a break. The reason why is because when God himself, limitless in ideas, limitless in energy, worked for six days, he took a whole day off and rested. I know a lot of creative people that don't rest. When you don't take the time off, then you're going to lose the flow from your God. You're going to lose those fresh ideas. One day, it's a rule. When God made it, in fact, eh, when God gave the law for Sabbath, he put it right next to don't kill somebody. As in, it's almost the same thing as murder. When you don't take that day off. When you don't, like for instance, I, for many years, you could never get me to do anything on a Thursday. But then I started to idolize the things that came out of my gut. And then I started to disobey and disregard my Thursdays. And then the river stopped flowing. So say to yourself, this is the most important thing I've said today. Give it a break. Give it a break. The last thing I'll say is learn to cleanse your gut. You have to be a sensor for what goes in to your spirit because what goes in is what you bring out do you understand the number one thing that goes into you is not what comes from outside it's what comes from your mouth so one of the ways that i cleanse my god is i speak words that are clean out of my mouth and i also am very careful who i allow near me i am very careful who i allow myself to listen to if i notice that the words coming out of your mouth are not cleansing to me, are not life-giving to me, do not help my river flow, I will withdraw. Another way that I cleanse my, my own God is I fast. When I fast off food, when I fast off talking, when I fast off company, it's time that I know that my, my river knows how I'm paying a little bit more attention. And then it begins to reward me. So God rules, finally. I'll go through this very quickly. I think I've already spoken about most of, most of the things I was going to say. Be very careful with God said. God said. Like I said before, your God is not your God. So let me give an example. My God might give me an idea and say, do this. But do you know that it's not an eternal word? So, if my God says, move to Paris. It might have been a word for 1999, and I didn't move to Paris in 1999, and it's 2016. I can now afford to move to Paris. And I'll say, just because I heard from my God to move to Paris, I'm going to move to Paris. So be careful with God said. Many times that things come out of our river, they may be for now, they may be for later. Do you understand? You need to be very, very careful. Don't, don't build your whole life on something that your God said. Because your God is, like I said, remember, rivers of living waters. It's always moving. It's always flowing. It's not static. And so the instructions that come from that place are not static. Um, another God rule, rule. Know, when you, know when you miss the God moment and learn to move on. Same thing I just said now. Sometimes you get a creative idea some of those ideas are meant to be moved on immediately. In fact, it's like, if you don't do it in the next five minutes, it's gone. And when you miss the God moment, 
learn to move on. I know people who are still holding on to God moments of five years ago. The economy has changed, the world has moved on, the idea is obsolete, but they're still there because they know they heard their spirit speak. And they are still there. They built an altar to that word and they can't move forward. Recognize when it's done and move on. It's a river. Remember, it's alive. They give you new instructions. Don't build a house on an instruction. Learn to live with the moving God. It's always changing. Finally, I've run out of time. Have consistent God time. I need at least an hour a day. If I don't have time with my gut, with an hour, for an hour a day, by the fifth day I'm, I'm empty, I'm dead, I'm numb, I'm tired, I'm terrible. I need an hour. If you don't, if you know you can't manage an hour, then have 30 minutes or 10 minutes where nothing else matters, but you're just letting the river flow. You're listening to the sound of the waters. Now the reason why I'm using allegories and proverbs and descriptions is because the experience is different for, many, for everyone and I don't want to create um, direct instructions. I want you to take the things that I'm saying and be able to apply it to your life. Create God moments. Create God time. Create God rituals. And not sure your God in love. In other words, out of, the Bible says you should guard your life because out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart. In other words, guard your gut. For instance, I don't let unforgiveness in. I don't let hatred in. I don't let regret in. I don't let bitterness in. Because those things corrupt or poison the waters that are flowing out of the, from the inside of me. And if I do let those things in, I will begin to create things that have that effect on other people. So, bitter people create bitter, bitter art. Depressed people will create depressed art. So if I have the joy of the Lord inside of me, then I'm going to create inspirational work. I'm going to create work that makes people happy. I'm going to create work that makes people... Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What you put in is what you, you bring out. So create a God for your God. And I think the final thing I'll say is this. Archive your God. And I think that's the same thing I talked earlier on about journaling. But when you archive your God, it's different from journaling. It means you take the things that you've journaled, because when you journal, it's all over the place, and take the key points and have it organized, so that when you want to see what's inside of you, there's a little blank sheet of paper that pretty much summarizes what you're about. Archive and organize your gut. Because there's so many, with so many ideas, but the ideas are lost in, like, I've got at least 50 of this. I've got so many journals. How do I remember what God told me in 2013? The things that are important have to be organized, they have to be accessible, they have to be archived, you have to find your own way. So what am I saying here? When you are alive, you have the ultimate competitive advantage. You have a living God. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You have instructions fresh from heaven. You can always bring heaven to earth. Nobody can compete with that. And if that is your number one ultimate resource, that communion we have with the Holy Spirit, that communion that we have with heaven, then we must take it seriously. And we must live from it. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> oh, yeah, questions and answers. Yay. Okay. with lost opportunities and those who say you can't my dear God is not a wicked God when the Bible says out of you will flow rivers of living water that means that river that was flowing five years ago when an opportunity opened is still flowing today and that river will always bring you new opportunities so you can let go and move on and know that God is kind to you and God actually loves and likes you so if you lost it you get it again He's very kind. I have to say this because there's so many creative people that feel that they've lost the moment. They've missed the moment. It'll come back again in another way. It always does. Do you understand? Heaven is so big. 
The earth is so tiny. God has so many heavenly expressions. Not enough people to express them. So I promise you there's so many opportunities. I hope that helped someone. Okay, somebody else says, been wondering. How do you feel when other photographers take your photos? Okay, I don't know about people taking my photos, but people copy my work. I'm not intimidated by that because my river is always flowing. I always tell people, once I've taken a photo, I already hate it because it's done. I'm always thinking, okay, so how do we move this forward? How do we take this on? If you don't have people copying you, you're going to think you're so special. And by the way, no, no new idea is new. Every photograph that I make that I think is so fantastic has already been done before, 20 years ago, probably been painted before, probably been a graphic artist has made something similar. There's no new idea necessarily. We just have new ways of expressing that are unique to us. So when people copy my idea, it's a compliment. But it doesn't mean anything because my river is flowing. New ideas every morning. The steadfast love of God never ceases. They are new every morning. And how morning and how God loves upon me is He gives me ideas. Um, another question. Ty, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you. How do you deal with your God on competitive grounds of business? Um, okay, this is not for everyone. Just stop being competitive. Period. Just leave from the gut. The river is so big and it's so vibrant and it's so amazing that if you live your life from the ideas that God is giving you constantly, your life will be so adventurous that you would have no competition. I don't think I have competition. Well, the people who compete with me see themselves as competition, but I never look at them and think, oh, that's my competition. I'm competing trying with my journals. I'm trying to see what I should be doing that I haven't done, that my river has brought forth for me. That's what I'm running after. I'm not running after anybody else. There's too much, there's too much life in my river. Say to yourself, there's too much life in my river. And the life is me is not small at all at all. The life in me is not small at all at all. So there's no need to compete with anyone. You're never going to get to a point where you get it right all the time. So you live in the present, you take risks. Living from your guts is taking risks. Because you're hearing someone something that no one has heard and you're taking actions. And sometimes you're going to be wrong. But the more you learn to train your ear and your heart to listen, then you start getting it more and more right. That journey of being sure, is it what I should do, should I not? I mean, I have a, um, a friend of mine who says, she knows so many cup or cones people. Like you ask them, how do you want your ice cream? The cup or cone, cup or cone, cup or cone. They can't make up their mind because they, they feel like they have to be right all the time. Um, Joyce Meyer says something, if you miss God, he'll find you. It's really very simple. Don't be so afraid of missing it. Because the Bible says that where can you go from his presence? You can't get so lost that God is looking for you. Abby? Okay, next question. Negative thinking can be a hindrance to going with your God. How do you conquer this? The Bible says, think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, Whatever is a good report, think on these things. So if you try to not think negative thoughts, then you're thinking negative thoughts because you're trying not to think negative thoughts. So you change and you focus on something else. And when you focus on something else, what you don't want to lose its voice and its influence. Do you understand? So um, the Bible says meditate on God's word day and night and you shall make your way prosperous. So if you're constantly being barraged by negative ideas, just focus on the good ones that you know. I, I think that's kind of simple enough. What you stare at becomes clearer and bigger. So if you don't want to leave out the, on the negative ideas, focus on the positive ones and focus, focus on the God ideas. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope that was helpful. There's more questions. Yes. There's a short question. There's an adage that says, when you fail, try and try again. How long can you try before you quit? 
Well, it depends on how you're trying. So if you do something one way and it didn't work, you don't do it the same way again and it won't work and do it the same way and think, you know, that, that thing that people say that it's a crazy man that does the same thing the same way and expects a different result. So every time you fail, you've learned another way not to do it. So you try a different way, you try a new way. And when you listen to the Spirit, He will tell you a new way. And you try that new way. I hope that helps everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have shared the, my few.